so Father, help us to understand a bit more why the, the guttural reaction to the physicality of traditional Christianity, of Holy Orthodoxy. Yeah, again, there are many reasons. I think, you know, at, at a basic level, I think there's a lot of social anxiety associated with, you know, stepping outside of the, stepping away from the congregation to, 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 to start making prostrations or yes. to go up in front of the congregation and, you know, with your vigil lamp and start kissing icons. Some people are embarrassed by that. Uh, just as people are embarrassed to make the sign of the, Orthodox people are embarrassed to make the sign of the cross in a restaurant before they eat their food. What's behind that? Well, look, uh, social pressure. I mean, we live in a society that's hostile to public expressions of forms of faith. I mean, generally speaking, Christianity in particular. So there's this, people don't, I mean, we, we pride ourselves on being individuals, but it's a total lie. We're all cookie cut from the same, right? Nobody wants to be different, yeah. right? I don't care how weird the norm is. That's, I want to be normal. I got, got, I don't want to be different. I can't take that, right? That's too, that's too hard a path to walk. So I'll just go along with mm -hmm. everybody else. And no one else is doing this. Sure. So I'm going to sit there and be making all, you know, when the plane takes off, I'm going to start, you know, I'm going to scare people. I'm going to start, you know, I'll right? be scared. Yeah. So I'll make a small one. <laughs> make a small one. You know, and let's face it, I mean, to, to, to bring the, the body fully and wholly into worship um, is not something that people are used to. And it, admittedly, it can be awkward if you're not practiced at making prostrations. Sure. I mean, crouching down, bending down, some people put their head to the floor. It's not, it's not you know, it's yes. not that easy to do sometimes. Sure. So there's a lot of awkwardness, and I think people are just, there's a lot of social anxiety is the word that comes to mind. Do you think there's also conceptual, uh, religious concepts? That... Yeah, it, it just keeps going. I mean, I think, I think there's a, you could even describe this as a kind of Western Gnosticism. Mm -hmm. You know, some years ago, Alan Bloom wrote a book called The American, Har Harold Bloom, Harold Bloom, wrote a book called The American Religion. And the argument was that, well, there is only one American religion and it's Gnosticism. And the Catholics are sort of high church Gnosticism and the Protestants are low church Gnosticism. The whole idea is that religion comes down to what you think. It's concept, it's yes. what you believe. Yes, and ideas. Has, what's that? Ideas. Ideas, as if it were just some philosophical system without any kind of concrete, embodied uh, practice. Yes. Part of that is, I suppose, people say that after the wars of religion ended, the state became religiously neutral and religious expression was restricted to private interiority. Yes. No longer had a place in the public yes. sphere sure. or town square. It, it was now, in other words, in order for all of us to get along with our different religious traditions, it's all got to be kept buttoned up now. It's in your heart and it's yes. in my heart, but it's yes. not in the restaurant yeah. or on the airplane. Or, so that The concept of, that. of religious freedom means you can do what you want within the four walls of your church instead of living a faithful life to your religion in the public square. Right, and I think this is a kind of subtle form of Gnosticism because the idea is that, you know, uh, well, God sees my heart. It doesn't matter what I do with my body. Yes, right. That's kind of secondary or unimportant or just factors out, you know, I mean, so much of who we are as human beings. I mean, we're embodied organisms. We're not brains in jars. Yes. And you think about the whole movement of society now with this kind of, so there are certain people now who feel disgust and shame with their bodies. It's like the iconoclasm. People say, you know, art historians will tell you that hostility towards art is hostility towards women, right? No connection between the material world and matter and mater, mother gets mapped onto, uh -huh. gets gendered and so forth. So that the, that the, and a lot of these puritanical sects and religions that are hostile to art also have very serious problems with women. Right? They've got to be veiled or covered or kept out of sight. They can't come into the place of worship. And there's a continuum there. You were, you were at least, yeah, you were standing on the edge of a, of a larger concept, I think, w that I'd like to ask you about, which is also the whole concept of well, transhumanism. You described oh, that we're right. not just brains. I mean, yeah. Yeah. people do think that that's the center of consciousness and they're trying to preserve their brains in freezers because somehow that's the core of their being apart from anything right. else. Right. So, the, so because the, the body metaverse, is, the metaverse, right? Because the body is so bad, and we're born into the wrong bodies, which doesn't really matter because we can change them anyway. 
let's just leave the body behind and upload our psyches or consciousness into, you know, what, give them to like Jeff Bezos and Amazon yes. is going to have, you know, and we're going to live in this sort of, you know, virtual reality, this fully yes. immersive experience where, I mean, this is, this is insanity. Well, and it's this... Not to mention hatred for the body. Yes. And all things material. But it's being sold as a, a deeper form of human experience. Instead of being with someone concretely, like we are now, we could just put on our metaverse glasses and have an experience together without having to physically well, be. That's what other. happens when you create a world that has no meaning and which you give people no hope. Uh, even now for basic kinds of things to live with, like homes and cars, yes. right? So, of course, you know, why wouldn't you want to be treated to some fantasy world? Yes, it's right? better than reality. Sure. Right. Well, reality is always, always disappoints, right? And rather than deal with that, let's just concoct some, you know, fantasy for ourselves.